Okay guys, so now we're just going to go for a quick go through the modes, okay? Um, now I'm not going to go through every switch setup with you at this, we'll do a different video on switches and their, um, their links on the modes, we're just going to go through the modes. My switch is already pre-set up for different things, so... Okay, so as you can hear, I've assigned um, some speech to the switch. I've also assigned, he says, let's just do that and I, I've just disassigned that, that, that switch by hitting the save because I've already taken out the arm, but we're going to redo that again in a minute. And we'll, okay, so you can hear horizon mode. So there we're going to be putting two things together. When I go into acro mode, I'm also going to be going to air mode. And then because there can be a little bit of a problem when you're landing in air mode, um, I'm going to be able to switch horizon. to horizon mode, which will turn air mode off. And I'll um, and we'll put that through as well. well. We'll set that up in the sounds. So to start off with them, uh, let's just do the arm. So here you've got arm. Now you've got to remember you've got, I don't know which order these go around, but you can just think about it like this. We've got like one, two, three, four, okay? Um, so those four channels are being used. So every channel after that, I've got 12 channels on the particular receiver that I'm using. And so every channel after that will go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve is being used already for the RSSI and link quality combined. On this, I have it that whichever is the lowest indicates to me whichever is the lowest. Okay. Um, so let's set up the first one. So for we're going to add a range, and automatically it's come up with channel five, which is fantastic. And we're going to decide that when we see this little marker be moved. This is all disabled, and the only place that it is where it's armed, I'll just move mine down, is there. So in this area here where it's blue, and the little blue marker goes, is where it's going to become active. And that's where it will be engines armed. Engine disabled. There's a little bit to go into about putting your armed on that switch, and what we can do about some of the things that can happen go wrong if you accidentally flip that off, but that's a different video so we're going to put that there we know that works there as we Engines can see it okay. and now we're going to go for angle mode now of course we can't use channel 5 because channel 5 we're using already and if we were to move Engines that across armed. you'll see that move there uh, for channel 5 now this is going to really work out well for us when we come in to add in a couple of modes to a single switch or a partial movement on a single switch so let's switch that off. Now we want to go for the next one. And on this, for me, I've set mine up to be channel 6. This is where I get to shift between the mode. Uh, uh, is it the modes? Not rates. So the, 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 we'll just call it modes. I don't know what the word is for it. So if I move, if I put this to channel 6, and because my switch I've already set up for channel 6, you can see there it moves across once. And then into the middle of the horizon, mode, air mode. and then we go to nothing there, which defaults it to acro. Okay. So because I want to do the um, the the auto level and angle mode, I know mine says cheat mode. It's because it's just it's just there. There's a whole sound packet you can choose from the sounds that you want to put in there and I put cheat mode on. I shouldn't have it as cheat mode really, it's just angle mode. Which angle mode is where you've ha you you've hardly got any movement left and right. You can hit the stick full whack but it only moves it very slightly. Uh, which is all well and good when you're first having a go and you're just trying to hover floats around, just get used to the sensitivity of the sticks a little bit, but once you start flying a bit you really want to have you know as much movement as you can. So channel six again for angle mode and again we're going to add another range for horizon mode here and we're also going to give that channel six because we're working with channel six so if we go to horizon mode you see now this blue area is lit up let's make that a little bit wider this uh, blue area is lit up and then to angle mode that's there and then when i go to acro mode it's going to go into the default position of nothing and that automatically puts it onto acro. So if you don't have these set up, you will automatically go into acro 
uh, as the default thing. Now, I also want air mode to come on and go off. I want it to come on when I go into acro, and I want it to switch off when I switch back into horizon for landing. Okay? It's just going to make landing easier for me. So, again, we want to use channel 6, because that's the switch that I want to use to control this mode. So, we're going to go to channel 6, and we already know that when we're in acro, on the angle and horizon, it means that there's nothing there. So, I'm going to move air mode into this space, where there's nothing there. Now, what's going to happen is, when I go to horizon, you'll see even with air mode, horizon mode, air mode's off because it's the blue line here that indicates the active on all these. Wherever this is, is where your mode is active in this blue line. So I'm going to pop that like that, and then when I want to go into air mode, mode. Air mode. okay, so we go into acro mode, and air mode comes on automatically. So now I can go and do some fancy stuff, hit that um, throttle all the way off, knowing that even though the mode has reduced down a hell of a lot, I've still got PID control. So we're not just going to flap out the place and do what yeah do you know do what you can you can see that happens with a lot of quadcopters if you just hit the throttle straight off you know they just bubble all the way down to the ground and not very good at all. Okay, so that's that switch. Now this is what you're going to do for the whole lot. So we've got another one here. All right, I can't remember what that is. But what we're going to think about now is the things that we want on this. And one of the things that we want to push at the moment on this is um, return to home and position hold. Okay. So on over on the other side here, this is where I've got mine. You know, you can set up your switches on whichever ones you like, how you like. It's up to you. You could put them onto these uh, variable potentiometers if you, if you like. Might be better off if you were controlling the camera with these, or you know, whatever. But let's just go to um, let's just skip down a whole bunch of these things. We can go to nav, uh, nav position hold, and we're also going to look for nav return to home. So this is the next one that we want to use. Now, if if you're using one of these radios, you do have uh, sorry, you do have on the front. I hope you can see this. But you get to see. Engines armed. If you see that move down there. Engine disabled. Engines armed. And down there gives you the the number of the channel. So if I were to. Position hold. Off. Return to home. Now I don't like the way two of these are going for this. Off. Position. That looks like there's a little bit of a. Return to home. An upset. Horizon mode. Cheat mode on. Okay, I'm just checking that that's okay. I've obviously put air mode, air mode on there as well for something else. Off. Sometimes when you update these, and even though you copy your models across, it's always good to check Return that all your home. all your channels Off. are still doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because sometimes you know things can uh, things don't always go the way you plan. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a quick look at that and just see what channel that was. That was channel Off. 11 and 12. Okay, so I'm quite happy to use channel 11 because I know my channel 12 is actually being used for RSSI. Return to home. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll go into, into the channel settings and I'll show you how to do that in a different video. We'll go into the channel settings and we'll just go through our channels and just ensure that we've not got those two overlapping. Because you, you really don't want that like that. But just for this little experiment, um, because it's only on the RSSI, I'm not, I'm not going to be bothered to, with it too much about it. And I know which channel I want to use now. I need to use channel 11. Because like I say, I'm already using channel 12 for my RSSI. Because you have to give it a channel. Um, we're also going to use a position hold on channel 11 as well. Now, the only difference is here now is uh, I know that if I push the push the switch forward that's my position hold and if I, I I look at it like this is when I want it to come home I want it to come back to me so the switch comes back to me return to home to return to home and I can see here now that return to home is over here return to home because the little blue mark is there if I switch off. back that's off we're not we're not doing a um, position hold and we're not doing return to home if I position push forward I know now 
put my position hold, position hold there. Off. Okay, so we can just save that like that. So now I've, I know I've used channel 11, I know I've used channel 5, channel 6, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've got 6 controls and I've used one, two, three channels. Okay, which is which is pretty good because there's going to be other things that we want to be able to do. Like we want to be able to do altitude hold, and my altitude hold, if I remember rightly, altitude hold, <laughs> is on this switch here, and on that altitude one there, hold. he's saying it's channel, off. altitude hold, channel ten, and channel thirteen. Off. So. When I did the update on this, when I've been doing this, there has been some, some mistakes made. Now the nice thing about it, because we're saved, I can just and switch that off because that's the beacons. I'll show you how you can set those. Um, you can change the timing on them and then yeah, the volume on them as well. But that's a different video. So we also want to make sure, because we want to be able to do some things with this, so a beeper we want the beeper because we want the uh, the lost alarm. The uh, the lost. Harder, harder, and my harder, beeper here is harder. on channel seven. So now we know we use five, six, and seven. The beeper uses an entire. Uh, unfortunately, it uses an entire channel to itself. Harder. Right now, if I just say that. Harder. Okay. So if I'm up in a tree or it's in a bush or it's in some long grass and I'm not quite sure where it is and I don't want to wait for the the beacons to go off on the ESCs, I can just Potter. and get an audio, an audio sound. Potter. Yeah. So that does come in really handy. It does come in really handy. You don't have to use it. You could just wait for the chimes. And if we do run out of channels and we need other channels to do things, well, that's exactly what we're going to have to do. So let me just set up. And I know that I've got to go in and clean up as well, but let me just set up um, the altitude hold. Why did I just see that? Altitude hold, altitude hold, altitude hold. Ah, because we've also got down here, look, see this, the on-screen display I showed you before. You can have three different on-screen displays if you want, so you can put them onto a switch. You can even set up your on-screen display so you have a different one for angle. Yeah, you can have a different on-screen display for horizon. And a different one again when you're in down here on the switch on this particular switch for uh, acro. So with me in acro, I'd have the least amount of information on there because you, you, know, you don't really want to be looking at that. But if I was in Horizon, I'd probably want the same, uh, a lot more information in there, maybe. But you you don't have to find another switch. You can, you know, add to the actual channel number and get the switch to control that mode as well. That's where you can start, you know, doing a bit of like a, a coming through with the old modes and switches. So, so for the altitude hold, I'm going to put that on channel 10. I know I've got to go and clean it up because it's also being activated with the, uh, let me just check that again. Altitude hold. With channel 13, which really is not going to affect this because this altitude receiver, th this receiver only has 12, um, 12 channels. But still, I prefer to go in there, in the software in here, and clean that up. Uh, so we've got altitude hold there. Now we've got to figure out now what else we can put on with altitude hold. So what else we got? We've got a turn assist doesn't really come into it with us. That's more for fixed wing. Heading hold again. Um, I don't. No, I don't suppose you can really use heading hold on a on a quad. Particularly, I mean, I suppose you could, but you normally be manually flying it. Whether you've got altitude hold on, right, is a different thing. This surface thing, um, this I think is if you've got a sensor, so you can actually sense the distance between the surface. Let's say if you wanted to do it, um, the 400 feet, because you've got to remember, if let's say you you take off from here, or where can you see better? So let's say if you take off from here and then you're allowed to go up to 400 feet, right? But if you take off from here and then you come across here, you're no longer 400 feet from what's below you. So you're allowed to go 400 feet above this, then you've got a little bit of time to bring yourself back down again to 400 feet. And I think with these surface things, that's, that's what helps with that. 
Well, we've got to make sure that we've got a switch because I don't use things like home reset. Um, that switch would be, let's say, if you were flying about and then for some reason, I don't know really off the top of my head why you'd want to use this, but for some reason you decide that you want your home point where the GPS located you as home. When you first plug in, when you, when you first power up your quad, it's going to use the satellite receiver um, to take your GPS location and lock that to your home position. Okay, so then when you're flying out there um, and you want to return to home, it knows to come back to where you powered up from basically to where it first took your GPS location. Now, there's a little bit of a mess up with that, or can be, is you could be flying, let's say with fixed wing more so than a quad, because with a quad you're going to fall like a brick out of the sky. But you could be flying with fixed wing and, and just accidentally, I've done it before, just put my radio down and it's not the switch off. And now when I turn it back on again, it sets the home position to wherever the craft was at the time. And so if you're flying somewhere you don't really know that well and you've you got into a bit of a pickle, you do a return to home, it's going to fly back to where you switched on your switch. And I'll show you the bit of code that you can use for that on a different one when I actually do that about this particular switch. Where you can decide to um, set it so it doesn't happen like that. So me, I, I, I have mine set up and I'll show you on, um, on this. Uh, it's only when I power it that it takes the home position. It won't do it any other time. It's only when I cycle this power, this, this on and off. Once it's locked in there, it doesn't matter whether this goes on and off. It keeps the home position that I first set up on it because, you know, chances are I'm still in that home position. Okay, so we've got a, now that we've got a position hold, uh, we've got a return to home, we've got our altitude hold. Now, heading hold active. This would be because if it was set up on a um, heading hold active, if it, if it was set up on a on a uh, fixed wing. Now I am wondering whether it's of any use to me on there. I don't know, but if it's not, then you know I'm going to be using one of these other switches to set up my waypoints because I I, I want to be prattling around with these waypoint missions. I know why I keep saying prattling around. I've been around a few people. Over the last you know, few days, I've been talking like that, so um, I want to be playing around with the waypoint missions. Uh, just see, you know, just see what we can do with this. Now, this uh, FPV angle mix, I'm not even quite sure what that's about, but this is um, camera stabilization, servicing we talked about, home research we talked about, GCS nav. Uh, I don't know what that is. MC braking, so this is motors braking, uh, fail safe. That's always good if you want to chuck it into a fail safe, but generally, if you've got return to home, and then you can put the fail safe on your return to home. So, you know, if you're going to get into problems, you just, oh, sorry, you flip your return to home, and that is your fail safe in a way. Oh. And it's also your fail safe as well when we go into the settings. Um, for you actually getting back and that's something we're going to look at in a second actually so we may want to adjust the uh, on-screen display as I said you've got a choice of three on this when you set up your on-screen display and you can put them onto your different onto your different modes here for angle horizon and of course when you're down here like I said before um, your acro mode camera controls you're probably more going to find that you know if you've got cameras on your obviously a much bigger quad than this uh, or a hexacopter, octocopter um, or, a, or, a, or an airplane you know whether it be a wing or, or uh, just a fixed wing basically we just call it fixed wing so camera controls fail safe kill switch mm, not sure what you might want that for and the on-screen display switch is uh, mm, I can't remember what that was for I think that's another way of doing I have to look into that. Why you want to use that? I'm pretty sure that on my on-screen display switch, when I was using the little Minim OSDs, you, there was a way of having the on-screen display switch on there, uh, and you wouldn't use it through here because this is uh, sorry, this is using it through the firmware here when you get to see the on-screen display. And we'll we'll do a setup like that, and we'll switch in between it as well. 
it's not set up now we're not going to do it on the video so as for modes let me just go into a quick advanced tuning and um, oh sorry advanced tuning onto a foul safe and now you see instead of it look, you can have it so it drops out of the air <laughs> you can have it so it lands or you can have it so it returns to home I'm going to put mine on so it returns to home I wouldn't have this do nothing thing now let's have a look what's it say here use alternative minimum distance foul safe procedure when close to home okay, I think that's just a separate switch for doing this so you've got a, a different foul, foul safe procedure because I think it only will do when you're at a certain distance away return to homes okay and I think this is a this is the delay for turning off the motors, but that's a different thing. This is a different video, okay, because there's quite a few bits, bits and pieces going on this. Um, but I'd normally have that set to there. So I'm just going to go back to those modes and just make sure that I've done that. So that's it. That's easy enough, isn't it, to set up your modes. And you can see that you can add. Uh, I'm going to do this here now. I'm going to add for the camera. So we're using channel 6. We know that this one down here is our angle. We know the middle is horizon. And we know the edge is acro. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to go into here. We're going to use channel 6. And we're going to go. So on screen display, um, what is one is one for the alternative. Um, and then channel 6 again and then we're going to have this in for horizon okay and then we're going to have down here for acro okay so now you'll get to see as I shift this switch here these will switch as well not quite oh sorry <laughs> it's not on the right channel there we go just on channel 6 so let's put that back uh, so we'll have air mode come on when we're in acro, we'll have on screen display 3 come on when we're in acro and then when we go to horizon that will switch off and this alternate on screen display will come on when we're in horizon and this, now you remember these could be exactly the same, that could just have nothing on it, you, you can do that however you like and the way you set them up and we'll go through how you can do that as well. But just for now, we can see now that we can control not only air mode with the one switch, not only the modes with the one switch, but also our on-screen displays with that one switch. Okay, right, that's it for the end of this video. And um, we're going to look at the magnetometer. Um, no, that's it for the end of this video, guys. And um, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.